And right on cue, the images began streaming down. But it quickly became apparent that Titan wasn't ready for its first close-up. We have just received exciting word that we have the first image in. Okay. As you can tell by the cheers behind us, we can confirm that the Dragon capsule with the AX-1 crew has, has splashed down. Dragon Endeavor has returned home with the Axiom-1 crew. Dragon SpaceX, we see splashdown and mains cut. We confirm. SpaceX recovery ship and team that you see there on your screen has been waiting for Dragon Splashdown, and they're now making their way to that location. On behalf of the entire SpaceX team, welcome back to planet Earth. <laughs> the Axiom-1 mission marks the beginning of a new paradigm for human spaceflight. We hope you, we hope you enjoyed the extra few days in space, and thanks for choosing to fly with SpaceX. Sir, to you, Ken, the team, and MCC, and all the teams that have supported us, all the engineers, technicians, and we're very grateful for mission All right, well, good calls there from MLA and CORE. And we copy all. Crew excited to be home. All of us on ground happy to have crew back home. Now, the teams have been ready and waiting for about three, three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them about 30 minutes to make their way uh, to get the crew inside Dragon. So there we can see those two drogue parachutes, which were released of course first and right. then you know they are let go in order to release the mains uh, that's what we see making their way exactly. back to earth as well of course <laughs> the whole system comes back yeah Sarah, we're in section three we think we're in stable two we can't see very well out the windows Dragon, your comm is getting pretty hard to hear. Uh, maybe we can have Larry relay some of that. Yes, Sarah, we're just uh, confirming we've got fog freezing on the windows that we are in stable one. Certainly feels like it appears to be. Copy that, Larry, and can confirm we'd see stable one as well. By the way, uh, my thanks to, to you, everybody, all the people who have supported us around the world. Just an uh, amazing job and amazing mission. Appreciate the words, Larry. So that was our pilot, Larry Connor, also just expressing his thanks. And we can see the Dragon capsule. So I just want to, you know, kind of inform a little bit about what yeah. those calls were. So we, we heard the crew basically wanting to confirm um, stable one, stable two. Um, so that's basically just the position that the, ca that the capsule splashes down in. Um, so stable one being this primary upright, um, stable two would be like, it's a little bit more on its side. Okay. And that's why they said, can't really tell, can't <laughs> quite see out the window. Right. Um, I have a feeling they were like, well, based on, you know, the way that How we're feel. Fe fitting right. in the seat, we're right. right we think we're this way. Um, so uh, that's just confirmation of the position that. False Quindar tone. Yeah, false Quindars. <laughs> you hear Quindars uh, key up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the recovery teams uh, are now uh, starting to approach the Dragon capsule. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. You can expect personnel alongside in about one minute. Perfect. So there's that safe approach call. Understand. One minute. 
Yeah, so the reason why the recovery team doesn't just rush there, um, so Dragon is loaded with hypergolic propellants, uh, monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, and they are toxic right. when you breathe them. Right. So for the safety of the crew, both you know inside and the recovery team, um, we wait for Dragon to you know basically double, triple check that all of those vents and everything are closed off and there's no venting from the Dragon capsule, like from those uh, Draco thrusters themselves. So that's what that um, communication was in terms of making sure that we, we got the okay from the capsule right. and then Mission Control gave the okay to the recovery team. And we can see them there. Uh, there will be an individual that actually climbs on top of the capsule <laughs> uh, and they are placing the the harnessing and the rigging and, essentially yeah, for hoist exactly okay. uh, the equipment that's required in order to uh, lift dragon onto the recovery vessel infrared shot there of that fast boat um, as we call it mm -hmm. approaching and they're basically doing another um, sniffing test essentially where they're you can see that they the team has um, has PPE on personal protective uh, protection equipment uh, respirators to yeah, respirator to do a, a triple check mm -hmm. that the vehicle is not releasing any of those uh, toxic hypergolic vapors right now, as we mentioned earlier this is a very you know, coordinated maneuver, right? The weather has to be right. The area has to be clear. You know, we mentioned how it's important that, you know, other people are not in the area um, because this is, but as Kate mentioned, um, you know, you have the, the safety aspects of the of the um, hypergol that you need to worry about, but also just what crew is trying to do there. That's not an easy thing to do in the water. Um, having done a few boat maneuvers myself, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not that easy to be doing what they're doing. So having, having the area clear for these teams to work um, and, and make contact with crew, um, but while also performing these maneuvers is really important. And you can see as well why we had to wait for such a super go for clear conditions yeah. and weather <laughs> on a splashdown day. Even with nominal seas like that, um, you know, this is, a, this is an operation that takes a lot of attention um, and a lot of work on, on ground crew's side. Now, one thing I want to mention, um, you know, we have talked about Commander MLA, Michael Lopez Alegria, how he has been to space before. Uh, this is the first time that he has made a water landing. Right. So, um, right. you know, he landed back on land uh, with the space shuttle and the Soyuz. Right. Uh, so this water landing, you know, we gotta, we gotta keep it interesting, right? Exactly. Gotta, exactly. gotta um, you know, get to do something new. Yeah. So there we can see one of the SpaceX recovery uh, team members has climbed on board Dragon in order to start uh, essentially equipping Dragon with the, uh, the things that we need in order to lift it or hoist it up onto the recovery vessel. Right, so on that note, Kate, you know, looking ahead at some of the operations ahead of us, you know, once once the team is done rigging, uh, the next big phases of this are really to bring a recovery ship. We're waiting for a Dragon, time. SpaceX, come check. I have you loud and clear, sir, I'll Have you loud and clear as well. Just wanted to verify a calm configuration update. For awareness, um, it appears we have a couple parachutes that are going to be need to towed, need to be towed out of the way for the recovery ship to approach. Um, so there might be a slight delay to schedule, but we'll get you an update on timing soon. Top you off. All right, so on your screen, we could see the recovery teams basically lassoing uh -huh. the Dragon capsule uh -huh. in preparation. Now, we did hear a little bit of new information there from SpaceX Core, which is the crew operations and resources engineer, Sarah Gillis, uh, just letting us know that a couple of those parachutes that came down with the Dragon capsule, um, that you know, once the Dragon capsule lands, 
we cut the lines to right. those parachutes um, so that you know if there is a little bit of wind, the Dragon capsule doesn't get pulled along with right. the, the parachutes. Now those parachutes, uh, we do recover them, uh, and we're you know we just heard some information there that we need to basically move them out of the way in order for that recovery vessel to make the, the larger recovery vessel, the primary vessel to make its way uh, to the splashdown site. Right, which you can see the team's doing there, right? Pulling some of the parachute out of the way. And, and you know, it's a good call on, on core to, you know, have that comm check and then let them know, let crew know, hey, there's been a slight deviation to the schedule, all nominal, all's good, but want to give you a heads up. If I were inside Dragon Capsule, I would really appreciate yeah, that exactly. information exactly. because you know, as we as we see how the the ships, or excuse me, how those boats are moving and how the capsule is moving, uh, that movement is a little less dynamic right now. But a couple minutes ago, I was you know I was watching the Dragon yeah. Capsule and I thought I would probably be feeling a a little unwell <laughs> right, right. Uh, with that rocking motion. So, you know, just for mental preparation yeah. and stabilization, yeah. knowing, all right, I might have two or three extra minutes to get through this. Kind of acclimate I can myself do this. a little bit. I can yeah. hold on, right. <laughs> Dragon SpaceX for internal video. Go ahead, sir. If y'all are feeling up to it, Request permission to come on board via the display camera view only. Permission granted. Copy that. <laughs> 